What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and adventure is in the air. Ah, the Dirtster lives! Project Raw Dog is actually on the road. I cannot believe it, or I guess I can believe it. I, I usually will just go ahead and send things without a second thought, so I, I you know what? I can believe this thing's on the road. Uh-uh. It's an adventure bike. All right, I got, <laughs> like I've been so fond of saying, every bike's an adventure bike. All you gotta do is take it on an adventure. So let's go on an adventure already. If you guys are new here, I'm Shade Tree Surgeon. We make bad decisions on this channel. And this week's bad decision, or this month or this year, is a, is a 21 year old sportster that I've decided to put long travel suspension on and bags and call it an adventure bike because Guess what? This might be a this might be an outdated cruiser from the early late 90s, early 2000s. But you know what? It identifies as an adventure bike. It's 2022, baby. You can identify as whatever you like, but the proof is in the pudding. So, just because I put some long suspenders on it doesn't mean it's going to be up for the task. And how can we know if it's up for the task unless we go out and try? I've been trying to get this thing ready. I've been running up against the walls. I've been running out of time. I literally wasn't even sure I was going to leave. Or I think we're probably going to end up doing like 3,000 miles. A lot of it's going to be off-road. I wasn't even sure I was going to leave up until I actually got on the bike and left, which is par for the course for me, really. Yet here we are, escaping the Wang. We're in Florida right now. The destination is somewhere. I'm not really sure. I'll be honest. I don't even know where I'm stopping tonight. All I know is I got to escape the Wang, baby. I love Florida, but when I get a wild hair on my ass, I just got to get out. Oh, I can feel it building inside of me. Oh, <laughs> the shivers are coming on. It's time to spread Shade Tree Army across the face of America. Escape the Wang, baby. Oh, yeah, things are definitely not what I would call ideal on the Sportster ADV bike, but that's kind of the point, isn't it? I already feel a lot of relief in the way I'm sitting. I, I wouldn't have minded having some back support, but I think the way that I had that Odin bag right behind me, uh, is it still up there? Please don't fall off. All my clothes are in there. <laughs> like I said, I could have fit all of my stuff in the Nelson Rink bags. I just, I, for, I wanted some extra space and I wanted the backrest, and all of a sudden I just bucked up myself by trying to overthink it, which is uh, pretty much par for the course with old Shade Tree Surgeon and any motorcycle build. But when you ain't got any time to test and tune, you gotta figure it out on the road. So I've got some tools, I got a few bungee cords, and I'm crossing my fingers after that. Let's see if we can make it. As I get closer and closer to the Florida border here, uh, up in Jacksonville right now, I'm just like, shouldn't an adult be stopping me? Like, sh shouldn't somebody have been telling me not to do this? <laughs> I just feel like, why, why, why am I allowed to take this motorcycle that I've built myself and exit the state? This doesn't seem like it's okay. I just feel like a little kid who's gotten too far away from home on his huffy bicycle right now. And it's like, where's the, where's the adult supervision? Someone should have put a stop to this a long time ago. Woo! Baby, come on! The Dirtster! Raw dog! Old dirty bastard! Escaping the wang! Ain't no rubber holding us back! We're spilling out across America! <laughs> I should not be allowed to do this! Yet here I am! That's freedom, baby! Let's make it happen! Alright! Doing better. Well, define better. My, my bag, my Nelson rig bag, has not burned anymore, so that's a good thing. <laughs> it's, uh, we keep on burning it. Well, I'm going to be in a little bit of trouble, and my clothes are still here, so that's a good thing, although I definitely need some more bungees. I mean, I am in Georgia, so there's that. It's gotten me this far. Yeah, outside of anything else, like, we're moving. We're going down the road. We'll see if I can make it back. Yeah, things uh, are definitely not perfect, but for almost 400 miles in, so I've done something right. Of course, uh, a lot of people would probably argue with the fact about doing anything right 
when it comes to try to outfit an 883 Sportster for adventure, but <laughs> here we are! Which this? <laughs> I feel like I'm in a David Allen Coe song right now, and this might just be Arlo Guthrie over here. <laughs> I was just hanging out here eating my pickle, <laughs> and this motherfucker comes out of nowhere and goes, Hey, are you Shade Tree Surgeon? <laughs> I said, I wasn't there. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. <laughs> Fuck off. You can't prove shit. <laughs> what's, your, what's your Instagram, man? Uh, Eric Rumham. Eric Rumham. Yeah. I already love it, dude. Always sunny in Philly. I can always tell when somebody's going to know me because they walk up and they look like a redneck, but they got tattoos on their face, all right? <laughs> yeah, I've got a type. <laughs> Another one down, Georgia Falls, just like that. Welcome to South Carolina, baby. Damn, I feel like I'm actually making pretty good time. God, we're at quarter to three. I've already got two states down. I'll take it, baby. Raw Dog ain't showing no signs of slowing down. Well, it never went very fast in the first place. It is 883, but hey, okay, I guess it's slow, but it's, it is proceeding at least. Can you believe we're over 500 miles into this trip and I'm just having my very first glizzy now? Just something about a road hot dog, baby. That's half the reason we come on these trips, all right? You can't eat hot dogs all the time. I think I had someone in my last one that said, you look like you eat hot dogs all the time. I know I look like I eat hot dogs all the time. And if I did, I'd look even worse. Delicious. All right, my first pit stop of the trip coming. I know you guys are used to me like not taking no for an answer and freaking uh, just like going for 24 hours. And normally I would, even a Bridget Bounce Sportster. Listen up, baby. Old Shade Tree Surgeon ain't afraid to go in raw for 24 hours straight. Those bumps will clear up, baby. <laughs> but I, uh, I haven't really slept since Thursday and today's Saturday. So, uh... I'm feeling it now, Mr. Krabs. Oh, see you later, South Carolina. North Carolina, here we come. I didn't know there was the there was geese just walking around. <laughs> North Carolina. Hey, howdy. Where's my damn hotel? Before I get attacked by wild geese. Well, I told you guys I had uh, something special for me waiting up here. When I said special, I said real special. <laughs> hey, 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 wait for me. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, I told you that. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> Do here you don't no, you do me. They are actually you like can touch the ceiling. Normal height ceilings. But like I can forearm the ceiling <laughs> six ten right now. She's OP. Anyway, passing through the Carolinas, I had to stay somewhere, and uh, yeah, Liz Welly was down visiting us in Tampa, and she said, let me show you a little bit around uh, my place up here. And this ain't exactly her place, but she made a trip to come see me. So never a dull moment, Liz Welly here. We get to be the same height. It's all, it's all in the legs, okay? When we sit down, everything looks normal. Anyway, she took me to Zapata's. Very romantic getaway here with these nice lights, and uh, I love the disco lights back here here from the 1800 and uh, it's karaoke night. Hey, so Why not? I love it. I love it. Both the straws? Do I? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's straws. to share, like we're getting Lady in the oh, Trampet. That's cute. No, this is mine. <laughs> What's the verdict, kid? Delicious. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Oh yeah. Like a bird, she is. Not disappointing. Dude, I love the whole freaking onion bulbs on your steak over here. Uh, let me tell you something. Um, even though Ellie, Ellie in those heels is uh, 5'22", 5'22", I'm 5'12 and a half, but I still weigh about three of her. <laughs> There's no, <laughs> you're 10 inches taller, but I'm three of you. There's no way you're finishing that. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> you hit your best, huh? I'm doing my best too here, okay? <laughs> The harsh light of day. It's not actually a harsh light. The day is full of anticipation. There's not a cloud in the sky, and 
If I get away an entire 10 day motorcycle trip off road through the Appalachians in the middle of summer and I don't get rained on, cause let me tell you what, God loves an idiot. I'm proof positive of that cause I'm still here drawing breath. Let's get this motorcycle loaded up and enjoy some mountains. It was nothing but super slab yesterday, which I don't mind, man. I love crushing miles, but I like to crush the miles getting out of Florida and it feels good because I know what's on the other side of it is these mountains that are waiting for me. Amazing times with Blissful Ellie last night, but it's time to hit the road, baby. In and out like the wind. What can I say, baby? Can't stick around anywhere for too long. I'm a rambling man and I got a ramble. Like the song goes, I might be ugly, but I ain't shy. I'm a rambling, gambling man. Let's hit the mountains. I got the highways turned off. It's time to see. Uh oh. I was about to say, let's hit the mountains. I got the highways turned off, and I just missed my very first turn. Off to a swimming start, as usual. Yeah, sure, a rambling, gambling man. Like, it's definitely a gamble every time I start to ramble that I'll make it anywhere I'm trying to go. Not just because I'm on uh, pretty sketchy equipment, but also because I usually have no idea where the hell I'm going. It did not take long after turning highways off for it to just get absolutely gorgeous out here. That was the right move. Well, I'm hitting all the usual spots on this trip. Just got done eating breakfast at a Waffle House. Man, I love Waffle House. Waffle House over IHOP and Denny's all day long, man. Even though the food at IHOP and Denny's is probably better. But hey, but you know what? Screw that, dude. Denny's and IHOP are like Waffle House for people who don't know how to fight. Boys, I'd say that there is a mountain. I can't believe we're just like literally like 50 miles outside of Charlotte and it already looks like this. Hell yeah. Mountains in the distance. I guess that's what we're going up. <laughs> and we're gonna go up it uh, on a road and then we're gonna go all across it, not on roads. I always love this. I love coming into the mountains and seeing them in the distance like that and seeing the road going up. I can look I can look far over there and see the road going up and it just feels like I'm like like the, I can hear the clicking from a roller coaster and I'm on this bike I built myself it's half falling apart I've had to redo the bags four or five times it's broken down I fixed it and I'm gonna take it off road in the middle of the woods of the mountains after I rode a thousand miles away from home what could go wrong everything what could go right also everything let's <laughs> see what happens oh well, I can tell we're not in Florida anymore no more sand nothing but rocks baby and just like that, the slog of the super slab, which I said earlier, I actually like. <laughs> yeah, it didn't bother me at all, especially when this is on the other end of it. All of a sudden, it's all worth it, baby. Oh my lord. Oh. God, this just feels freaking good. on the Sportster, and I'm just getting here though. The adventure is just starting. As, a, as the TV shows always go, the adventure begins. It's a, when you're on a 20 plus year old Sportster that you built yourself, an 883 that can barely keep highway speeds, just getting to the place where the adventure starts is a pretty big adventure, you know? Going 700 plus miles on a rigid mount 883 Sportster, hey, it didn't bother me. I'll do it any day of the week, but you know, whether the bike decides to do it right along with me, that remains to be seen. Oh my god. Not even that much farther outside of Charlotte, man. I mean, I think we're at like 70 some miles outside of Charlotte right now. This guy definitely wants a downshift now that we're in the mountains. And 12.30 in the afternoon up here in the mountains, it's starting to get chilly. <laughs> like, I, I felt so freaking dumb bringing a hoodie. I also feel pretty dumb because I didn't even check the weather, but I mean, I don't know, it's summertime. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna rain. What the hell else happens during the summer? But all of a sudden I'm like, man, glad I packed that hoodie because it's getting chilly. They got that speed limit going down to 35 up here. Oh man, it is getting good. Cool. Go down to third gear here. Climbing, baby, we're climbing. Can the dirtster do it? This is my first time in any kind of twisties, or not that this is very twisty, it's just like some big sweepers here, but it's my first time on knobbies in anything like this. So not exactly the most confidence inspiring, even though they don't feel any different. Like I'm sitting here on the knobbies, they don't feel any different, they feel totally fine, but I know what's down there. 
And that sketches me out just a little bit, but I imagine the longer I spend on them, the more confident I will be in them, but <laughs> getting more and more confident in my knobbies, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I guess that remains to be seen. I'll tell you what I am confident in is this front suspension, dude. This front suspension is a freaking magic on this Sportster. Even with seven inches of suspension travel, it literally just, and the long, so it makes the fork tubes longer, which is why I've got that goofy front fender on there, because I really, really wanted to keep that fork brace with the longer tubes. But so far, absolutely freaking amazing, man. It just tracks at straight as a razor, man. Very cool. I have a feeling those front tires would give out long before that suspension fucks me over. Dude, and then just look at this absolutely gorgeous town right at the top of the mountains. How freaking cool, man. I guess it's like, I always think like, what is what is a mountain town? I guess it's like the uh, equivalent of a Florida beach town, right? Straight up the same with bars. So Florida, we ride to all the beach towns and out here you ride to the mountain towns. I think there's about 100% less of a chance of seeing girls in bikinis out here, but uh, the rest of the scenery is pretty nice. All right, looks like there's a speedway coming out because I am close to running out of gas. And I don't know how much, uh, I don't know how much more gas it's gonna burn here in the mountains with uh, having to stay in like third and fourth gear a lot of the times. I could go ga through gas a lot faster. Now this is a this is a pretty old school gas station. I dig it. Ah, well, new pumps. Inspection station. What the hell's an inspection? Well, I actually was getting better gas mileage than I was before. That last one, I got over 40 miles a gallon. I'm getting about 35 to 37. And I wonder if that's, uh, even though I was having to go down to fourth and third gear, I wonder if that is just because I'm in the mountains and it's running leaner. There's so many motorcycles out here. I love it. Howdy. Nice, I got some fresh new pavement for my knobbies. Making me feel even more confident. Again, probably not a good thing. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is not fresh new pavement right here. And this wouldn't be confidence inspiring on uh, regular tires, let alone Navi. So let's go ahead and take it easy on this groove stuff. And just like that, I'm out of North Carolina. We'll see you later. And we're in Tennessee, baby. Even though I drove through Tennessee uh, not too long ago in a video that hasn't been published yet, it was kind of a failure and I ended up just having to do the highway all the way through it. So this will actually be my very first time riding the back roads in Tennessee. The highway was gorgeous, let me tell you. So <laughs> I'm, I don't know how long we're gonna be in Tennessee. I think probably not for a very long time, but I'm pretty stoked. What was that? I'm going back. That's exactly why I have the tools. Why I'm actually supposed to be somewhere, but I'm going back. I'm on my way somewhere. Oh, was that a, I hope that wasn't a private driveway. Dodson Road. Well, I guess we'll see real quick if this is a private driveway or not. It might be. Yeah, if it's a private driveway, yeah, this is way too nice. This has got to be a private driveway. I was just like, ooh, this is exactly what I what I have the dual sportster for. This is what Old Dirty Bastard is for. Uh, yeah, what is Old Dirty Bastard for? For uh, getting me shot by someone who's like, get the hell off my property. I wouldn't blame him either. All right, let's go back. This was a wrong turn. But very pretty driveway you have, sir. Please do not shoot me. I am leaving. Oh, it's opening. Let's go. All right, see ya. Yep, we're out of here. Wrong turn. <laughs> On somebody's private property is not where I want to be in Tennessee, okay? Oh. Gorgeous, though. But once again, I'm in Tennessee, and I'm gonna be here for such a brief amount of time that I once again, I'm not gonna be able to see back road moto. Just so upsetting. I believe that the ultimate destination is in Virginia, but once again, I have no idea where I am. I'm actually meeting, well, I can't believe I didn't say this earlier in the video. I'm actually meeting uh, her two wheels up there, along with Jordan Ray Vlogs, Adam Sandoval, Chicken Fried Choppers, Tim from Gigastat, and a bunch of other people I'm meeting in this place called Damascus because they all built Sportsters to go off-road too. <laughs> I think it kind of started out with, uh, you know, me and Tim and I was building this Sportster and I'd call Tim for some advice and then Tim was like, oh shit, well, I'm, I'm, I'm building a Sportster too. And then and I talked to Adam and Adam, and all this was happening separately. Like Adam had, was in the middle of building a dual sports Sportster as well. And I was just like, damn dude, it was meant to be. And apparently Tim knows some crazy bastards because he put the word out there and a bunch of other people just were like, 
yeah, cool. What, like three months to build a dual sport off-road Harley? Like, I got you. We'll build one too. <laughs> and so I don't know half the people going up there. Like I said, I named all the people I do know. But uh, that's pretty freaking wild. As I was saying though, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how long I'll be in Tennessee. I have no idea where in the state I am. Uh, and I don't know where we're going after that either. I think uh, that's Tim's job. Tim from Gigasat is in charge of all that, which is my favorite because I just get to, you know, normally when I'm out doing something like this, I'll, 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 I'll worry all about the directions because I get lost so easy and I worry and I worry and I stress and then I get lost anyway. Now, at least I just won't even worry about it, man. Somebody else is in charge. And, uh, and if they get us lost, I'll be very forgiving. So we are in Johnson City, Tennessee because I just saw a Johnson City, Tennessee Welcome Center. As I've never been to Johnson, Tennessee, I'm gonna go ahead and go in it and learn a little bit about this town because I always pass through these towns and not on a very tight schedule today. So Johnson City, Tennessee, let's see what you're all about. Am I allowed to ride my motorcycle out here? I don't see any signs saying no motorized vehicles, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I said I was going to see what was up with Johnson City, Tennessee, but I think I'm going to go see where the trail leads instead. That seems cooler. Sorry, Johnson City. Is this somebody's house? Or are we allowed to go up there? Beats me. I keep doing this. I am really going to get shot by somebody. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a campground. You think that they wouldn't be calling it a campground? <laughs> Does the 883 have enough ass to get up it? Yes, it does, baby. The 883's first. Oh, this is definitely somebody's house. Okay, let's go back. Whoops. It's at the freaking welcome center. <laughs> God damn, Josh, you did it again. Holy crap, you're a freaking asshole. And as I just went down that pretty rock, I mean, it wasn't crazy rocky. Um, I guess this is not a campground. This is a campground, but that's somebody, definitely somebody's house. So they're howdy. I wonder if the other one's a house too. How's it going, man? I thought this whole thing was a campground. I think somebody lives up there. I believe it's a house. Yeah, yeah, I felt, I was going up there and all of a sudden I saw somebody's car parked. I was like, oh shit, I'm sorry, man. They made those changes on that box? Yeah, no, this started out as a regular 883 low. At the time I thought, well, I knew that was a sports trip, but I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, it's got seven inches of travel in the front and tolls. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still just an 883, so don't want to do more than about 70, 75 on the highway, but it'll go, it'll go, it went up that, but it won't go up much more than that. It still weighs 500 some pounds. Well, hey, y'all have a good one, all right? All right, I really got to stop driving on people's property. Oh, well, here's my review of Johnson City, Tennessee. Apparently they put campgrounds and people's houses just like on the same freaking property, okay? All right, before I get shot by some angry Tennessee native or ride my stupid Harley on their driveway, let's just go ahead and make it to Damascus and let Tim decide where we're gonna ride on the trail because apparently I'm not great at picking them. Still only like 100 miles outside of Charlotte right now. Which Charlotte, I mean, Charlotte's a big ass city. They got the motor speedway there and everything. There's I'm sure there's people in Charlotte who've, never, who've lived there in Charlotte their whole lives who've never driven up here. And this is within a hundred miles of your doorstep if you live in Charlotte. Freaking amazing. Oh, I got the waves from the leather daddies and the high-vis daddies. Life is good on an adventure sportster. Oh, man. <laughs> the stream on one side, the freaking mountain on the other. Life ain't bad, baby. Oh, come on. This is like it's out of a freaking postcard. This is the stuff, baby. I could be going faster. You know, that red truck up there is going pretty slow, but I'll be honest with you, who freaking cares, man? This is just so gorgeous. The air smells just so crisp and green. I can smell the water over there. I can smell the water on the rocks. I don't need to go fast. You know, the fact that, you know, I'm not super confident in the knobbies has nothing to do with it at all. You know, I'm just enjoying the sights and smells. Uh-oh. Turn on my freaking reserve here. 14 miles? Can it make it? I really wasn't trying to use my roto packs because, I mean, it's not that, it's not super hard to get off, but it's kind of a pain in the ass not everything is strapped in back there. So uh, I really hope I make it to a gas station. 
These guys killing it on the trikes, baby. I love it. Oh my God, can you imagine freaking just like dying, running out of gas with those turns right there? That would be a nightmare. Ooh, a town. Maybe I won't have to pull off my rotor packs after all. This is Damascus. Hotel is still another 11 miles away, but Damascus looks freaking awesome. Dude, this place looks righteous. Come on now. So it must be like a big bicycling thing. There's bicycles freaking everywhere. Trails grill. Oh yeah, this has got to be a, a big like mountain biking town or something. I don't know anything about Damascus. Oh, hey. oh, I do know they got a gas station. Cool. All right, got some Miller High Life and a fresh tank of gas. It's time to park this thing and have a goddamn beer. And that looks like a pretty cool place to party. I think definitely looks more bicycle friendly than motorcycle friendly, but hey man, two wheels are two wheels, man. I'll come drink a, I'll drink some beers with some cyclists, see how the other half lives. I know people love to hate on cyclists, but I personally have absolutely no problem with acoustic motorcycles, especially mountain bikers, man. Those guys get gnarly. This place looks pretty freaking cool, man. They got a whole bunch of like old barbecue joints. There's a brewery, there's a distillery. This place is all right, man. Oh, I say it's all right. I haven't been in one of the bars yet. Everyone might be a total asshole in Damascus. Who knows? <laughs> but it looks all right. It looks really cool. Really looks cool. God, I bet you can go rafting out there too. It looks amazing. Oh man, my man Chicken Fried Choppers is already here. Chicken Fried Choppers did an inverted front end on his. I think he took it off a, might have been a Husqvarna, maybe it was a Honda or something like that. And I went through a little hell trying to get it on. I do like the, uh, I do like the KTM <laughs> front fairing there. That looks really good, man. Dang, he did a good job on his. Walk out of the parking lot and who do I see? My number one, this baby, this absolute gorgeous, this vision, this queen out here. Her two wheels, Vampire. baby. It's been too long since I've held you close and experienced <laughs> your essence. And I've just, hey, what's up, Jordan? <laughs> Don't worry, man. I got nothing I'll tell to worry you. about. No, absolutely not. Because this man over here, this man among men, them strong arms, that chiseled chin. Let me tell you what, baby. <laughs> when the bears hungry he eats we can all have fun yep. let me tell you what, i literally just pulled up to the radish and i was like oh chicken fried choppers is here and then like literally just checked in pulling the beer out of my bag hand one to jordan ray her two wheels is here anyway she came down on the bmw but uh her two wheels had to come down because me her and jordan are gonna get freaking hammered tonight yeah i know i am <laughs> all right up here we're meeting more people it's a lot of fun jess went over and got beers amazing she walked even though she could have rode her bike she says you have to wear a helmet we got new what are your names again i'm so sorry Sorry, man. Beans Chris. Cool Beans Chris and Jay. Jay. And I would love it because I just freaking, um, Ellie just showed me our flag means death. And this motherfucker's a dead ringer for Blackbeard. He even acts like him and he ain't even seen the show. So it just must run with dudes that look like that. Photos, yes. Anyway, these two bikes they brought right here, which I love because, you know, I spent all this time building my bike and everybody had a lot of fun doing it. But you guys remember me saying a few times while I was building it, like, I don't need half the shit I did to it. You know, it's fun. I like it and it certainly helps, but we don't need half the shit we have done to it so cool beans chris literally this thing has been sitting in his backyard not running for fucking years and he just dug it out made it run and this motherfucker is doing the same trail we're all doing with literally just knobby tires and other than that this is a completely stock bike with freaking 11 inch slammers and his buddy came up on a freaking buell with just knobby so here's the thing that i really like about all this is that with all this stuff we did to this bike, it is fun. It is it is nice. It does help when you're off-road. You can also just do it on a stock sports with knobbies because that's what they did back in the day. Do a wheelie, pussy. This is all actually Tim's fault. He's the one who... It is Tim's fault. Oh, yeah. Those are like really nice. Have you seen mine though? <laughs> Here's the thing. Everyone wants to talk shit about Adam because he got a rubber mount sportster. And when I say everyone, I just mean me because I like to make my jokes. <laughs> Who needs a rubber, baby? Come on, man. They invented Plan B for a reason. They're two things Shade Tree Surgeon don't fuck with. Rattlesnakes and condoms, baby. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're all talking shit about it. Well, I don't think anybody else is. I'm talking shit about it because <laughs> I'm a shit talker. Yeah. But Adam had to work so much harder yeah. to make this motorcycle work. The amount of work that went into... I didn't work harder. 
Adam himself had to do this. Adam had to use his brain. <laughs> Adam had to do it with his bare hands. He actually invented the motorcycle doing this. I'm, so, I'm, I'm just I'm making that joke because uh, yeah, cause I'm making that anyway. This bike uh, took a lot more work than any of the rigid mounted sportsters that we did because all the stuff uh, still it, uh, you can just buy the stuff for these bikes. That bike, this bike, everything had to be made for it. So uh, a kind of a game changer too when you're talking about an adventure bike because obviously a rubber mounted bike is you know say what you want to and make my jokes and everything all that aside a rubber mounted bike is so far superior for touring than a rigid is well dang i thought i was gonna come down here and make a joke about how we need to go real fast because uh i was later than everybody and uh they all left without me okay so they left me but besides homeboys like literally like it's been in the back of his yard for a while like Dude, can you imagine this many Sportster dirt bikes all together? And they ain't even all here. I don't know, man. I think this is pretty freaking cool. So I was out here, I was like, where's my camera? We're fucking hanging out, we're eating food. And my man here goes, remember that alley we've been smoking grass in with an old man? There's a table in there and camera's sitting on it. It's been there for like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah it is here and it's just sitting outside and uh it's still here god loves an idiot all right it's the uh the harsh light of day and it's rough because adam sandoval would not stop putting jameson inside my body i'm saying i'm gonna go on record and say right now it was against my will but uh i sure seemed willing last night <laughs> the entire crew is here right now we have everything from xrs to mules to a completely stock sportster <laughs> right down to the stock pipes <laughs> man over there um and then like this is like from mild to wild dude freaking stock sportsters Adam Sports, there's this one. It's crazy to see this many dual sports, like dual sportsters in one place. All right, time to rock and roll, baby. We got day one of the MADBR barbecue. What the fuck, LOL. It's me, Rick, Tim from Gigastad, a bunch of new friends whose names I already forgot because I'm terrible with names. I don't know why I even ask people their names. I don't fucking listen to them when they tell them to me. It's like they literally they tell me their name and it doesn't even register in my head. It's our very first time riding together, Jordan. I'm excited. I've got that same jacket. I just didn't put mine on. <laughs> Dude, I love it. The purists are going to be crying salty Hurley Davidson tears. The XR1200 in the dirt. I love that. <laughs> Nothing is sacred. <laughs> it's so freaking cool, man. I really mean it. I'm just like, you know what? Fuck you and your and your one of a kind rare Harley. I was like, I'm back in the match this game, so I'm going to go really silly. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, dang. Well, I guess I'm looking through bug guts because I did not clean my drop-down visor. <laughs> the freaking, the stock sporty with the cargo net. I, you know what? With all the stuff going on out here, we have a, basically a stock XR1200 and a stock freaking rigid mount sporty over there. <laughs> See ya, Jess. It just goes to show you, like I said, you don't need a big badass adventure bike to have an adventure. If any bike's an adventure bike, you just gotta take it on an adventure, like these guys are doing up there. And you know, you look at the difference between my bike and Adam Sandoval's bike and, and any of these bikes and a full-on adventure bike. All you really need, <laughs> you don't need any of this stuff. All you need is a stock Sportster with 11-inch burly slammers on it, baby. <laughs> and, you, and you can do off-road trails too. I fucking love it. And when I first said out to make this bike the whole idea behind it was I wanted to buy a bike for under two thousand dollars and then for less than the luggage cost on a Pan America I want to build it into being a dirt bike well if you look at him right there I could have just spent the fifteen hundred bucks what I'm saying is the whole point of all of this is you ain't got to have a ton of money to make this happen you can just make it happen where there's a will there's a way baby don't let it hold you back you can have an adventure on the cheapest bike you can find. And now, here we are. The excitement is damn near palpable. As we take <laughs> some of these very shadowly built, some of them very well built, some of them not built at all. Just this pack of 
Forge series that we're going to do an all to the MADBR on. And I, this was all Tim's fault. This was Tim's idea. And I can't believe that he talked 10 people into doing this. Uh, he talked eight people into actually building bikes. Two of the people didn't build anything. They just showed up on stock motorcycles. As we crest the hill out here in Virginia, we're on the road. And I guess I love riding through roads like this so much, but we're about to leave it. This is about to be it. We're about to start this adventure with this giant pack of assholes out here. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but it sure is gonna be funny. And I think that's gonna about do it for this one, y'all. Till next time, keep it weird.